In this video I'm going to explain how I've added a, a jar file that I've created into my local Maven project and how you can do this for third party jars in a hacky way and more strategically longer term. So whenever I see this um, kind of information on the web it's always talking about third party jars. Now what I want to do is I've got a project it's a big project and I'm splitting it into smaller chunks. Each of those chunks is going to be a jar file. And what I want to do is have those jar files locally in my Maven project so that I can build them all together. Over time, I will open source them. I will put them on GitHub. I will add them into Maven Central. But for the moment, I'm building them locally, but I still want them as independent jars. I don't want to create a, an aggregated Maven project that pulls them in. I just want them in my Maven repository so I can call on them and the projects are completely separate. So the project that I'm working on is my rest mud game. It's, what I used to have for rest mud was a whole bunch of classes in here. What I've done in my rest mud game now is just the game and the application server. The actual game engine I've split out into its own project. That was relatively easy because I've been taking care to architect this so that they are split out as we go through. But what I've had to do here is build the game engine as a separate jar file. Then in my main project, what I do in the POM file, I just bring in the rest mud engine and this is coming in from my local repository. There's at least, so there's two ways that I know of, of having your jar files completely look well, there's three, but so the really bad one is in your IntelliJ project, go into your module settings and then in libraries, just add another library in here, right? That's completely avoiding Maven, but in your project, you're doing it. Now, sometimes I will do that if I'm hacking about with um, someone's application, I want to write unit tests to experiment with the application rather than test it from the outside. That's how I'll tactically use code to test an app, but that's not what I want to do when I'm developing code and when I'm working longer term. What I want to do is use my normal Maven file, the POM file to pull the dependency in. As a kind of tactical approach that leads to a longer term strategy of open sourcing it and putting it on Maven Central, what I've been doing is building it locally as a jar file, just a normal Maven package, creating the jar file. What I then do is I then have to take the information that's on here and install it into my local repository. This maven install install file installs it into my uh, local.m2 folder. So the way that I do that for my project, because I'm doing this semi-strategically, right? I know that long term I want this to go into maven central. I've created a batch file that simulates that process. Essentially my build process would uh, package it up and create the jar file. Then I want to deploy it somewhere. And the way I deploy that locally is maven install and then stay in an install file. And I want to install the jar that I'm looking for. I'm picking up the dependency details from the pom.xml. So that's the um, artifact ID, the version number. I could put those in the command line. You can see in here that we could add in the group ID, the artifact ID and the version into the actual command line. But because I've got access to the pom file, I'm picking it up from the POM file here. And I'm also adding the sources in. If I don't add the sources in, it means that when I'm working with the code in here and I start looking through my libraries and I want to see the game engine code dependencies, then it would show me the decompiled version rather than the actual code. When I install it with the uh, command line, when I install it with the command line and put the sources in, then I can see the actual sources. So the way that this would work is I would normally just type these things in from the command line. I'm using the terminal in IntelliJ. That's tend to be how I work with this. So I'm going to Maven install this particular jar file using the definition in the pom.xml. So the version number, the artifact ID from the pom.xml and add the sources. Maven will go away and do its magic and say it's installed it into the M2 folder, which is great. It means that I can then in my other project, just bring it in through the POM file. Now I've done this another way in the past as well. There is a way in the pom.xml to use a system dependency. So in the pom.xml, you're defining a file on your actual, anywhere on your um, system, on your hard drive. I had to do this in the past when I was working with Selenium WebDriver. And um, there was a version that was 
out but hadn't yet fully been released into the Maven Central, but it was on their site and I wanted to work with it. So the way we do this in the dependency is rather than the normal dependency definitions that we would bring it in from Maven Central, the dependency definition that I've got says I want to bring it in from the system and this is the path I want you to find it in the jar file. So rather than deploying it into the M2 repository folder so that my POM file can be untouched and it just goes away and finds it, here I'm specifying it on the local file system. Now this isn't very strategic, this doesn't work particularly long term, but as a quick hack, this might help you. But because I'm operating long term with RESTmud, installing it into my M2 repository is a much better idea. Longer term, the next best way, if you're working on a team and you've got a continuous integration process and you want everyone to work with a local file, the best thing then to do is set up a uh, repository manager like uh, Nexus or um, Apache Archiva. So this is the best practice that's described on the Maven site itself. But to do this, you have to set up the repository management tool, configure it, make sure everyone can access it. Then in your pom.xml, you have to add a repository section to declare which repositories you're going to access. And it will go into those before it goes off to Maven Central. But strategically, this is a good approach. Now, all of these approaches, the system scope, the installing into your local M2 folder, the repository manager, are when you want your code to not be public. Essentially, you're avoiding Maven Central. Even normal people like us, when we're creating open source projects, we can use Maven Central. So we can go through the process of packaging up your project correctly, configuring it in Maven Central, and then releasing it through to Maven Central. I'm not going to describe that here, but I've got a blog post that covers how to release your stuff into Maven Central. And that's the ultimate strategic approach for releasing your work as a separate jar file to bring it in through Maven. And then everyone can um, gain benefit from this. Now, what I find interesting is a lot of the time we're talking about third-party jars. Very often the reason I'll use this is because we've got our automated code, we've got our abstraction layers. We want to package up our abstraction layers as a jar file so that we can use it in uh, performance testing, so that we can use it in ad hoc testing, so that we can use it in um, ad hoc bot-based testing. And then rather than having to put all that code into the uh, test Maven project, if I just package up my abstraction layer as a jar file, I can install it into Maven or I could use it as a system scope if it's completely ad hoc exploratory testing. And then I can write tests around it that don't necessarily need to be put into the main continuous integration test process. So we'll use this not just for architecting systems that are um, well designed and e easily split so the dependencies are not tight we've not got tightly coupled systems. We can use this with our automated code to create abstraction layers that we can reuse in different places, give the abstraction layers to different teams, and then they can call and interface with our system using the code that we've made very robust for our own um, automated execution. So that's at least four ways of bringing in jar files in your project. Tactical that leads to strategic is installing an M2. Very tactical that you don't want to use very often is using system scope. Bringing in a repository manager allows the whole team to work locally in this way or moving it off into the central Maven repository, having open sourced your work and putting it out there so that anyone can use it as kind of the ultimate strategic approach.